If I was to compare a few Linux distros to furniture, I would say that KDE Neon is like a piece of flat pack furniture. You're expected to assemble it yourself and get your hands dirty. For Kubuntu, it's like a piece of pre-assembled furniture that you just have to paint and make it look pretty. Now for Linux Mint KDE, I would say it's like a piece of pre-assembled furniture that's already decorated and has a few little flowers on top, so it looks nice and glamorous. It is a type of Linux distro I expect to be able to install on my mother's computer and not receive one single phone call. So is it? No. For a nice, easy to use distro, I would still say Ubuntu Mate clinches it by a country mile. So what are the positives with Mint? Now bear in mind any negatives I'm going to be judging quite harshly on due to the nature of what this distro is meant to be. So upon starting up Mint 18 KDE, we are presented with the welcome screen. It's a little bit improved from previous versions, although I have to say the uh, Ubuntu Mate welcome screen is considerably better. So we're introduced to some new features, which takes us to a web shortcut and uh, makes it a little bit convenient for me to know what has changed in the distro. Some basics on the documentation. Okay, we get to choose the language. Hang on, I've gone on the internet to get this. Okay, let's hope all internet activity has worked for everyone by this point. So the user guide, 52 pages. Yeah. Okay, any pictures? Yeah. So okay, I could expect my mother to read all 52 pages and not expect a single phone call. A link to the App Store to install additional applications, but why is it opening GK Sue? That's wrong for KDE, it should be KDE Sue. It didn't do anything anyway. <laughs> oh, it did. Gets through in the end. Come on, that's a little bit slow. So at least with this software manager, you do get the application ratings and reviews. Okay, we've got the application reviews. Yep, some more reviews at the bottom there. A buggy app, no .plt, no .dxf, only proprietary formats. Who wrote that? Okay, take these reviews with a pinch of salt. So to install an application, looks pretty simple enough. Click the install button. Ah, it's automatically getting on with it. Good, no further questions. Go back to the welcome screen. A link for the drivers. Excellent. That is very good to see. I was going to come on to this later in the video where we get the glitches on the panels. This is a symptom I had within KDE Plasma 5.6, and this is the version that's on here. Okay, I'm just going to continue the welcome screen for a moment. Ah, oh, good, it's back. So, links to forums. Good. The chat room is the IRC channel. I popped in there earlier. Seems to be a lot of people coming and going. A few people helping each other. It's good to see. And last couple of links are getting involved and donations. Brilliant. Now don't think for a moment this is a symptom of me running in VirtualBox, this panel at the bottom. This happened to me on a real system, and it was particularly bad under Plasma 5.6. And sure enough, this is the version we're running. Okay, it's 5.6.5. The last one I tried was 5.6.3. The issue is gone by the time you get to Plasma 5.7, and that's why I particularly like KDE Neon. You've got a much higher version of Plasma, and far less bugs. So on the bottom left-hand side we have the application launcher. They've done a slight customization here in that it's partially transparent, but it doesn't look anything like the application launchers in the likes of the Cinnamon and Mate desktops. I remember the earlier versions of Mint, it looked very similar. This is just a default Plasma 5 menu, which if you don't like it, you can easily change. You have got right click, alternatives, and you can change between the dashboard and a different sort of menu. That's funny, I think the application menu probably more similar to the cinnamon menu. I think they should have had that as their default. So alternatives. I like the dashboard. That is one I'll go for. On the bottom right hand side we have the system utilities and this has kept open the applications that I was running on my last session. It's kind of default behavior in KDE. Prefer to disable it and just have a few select applications opening upon system boot up. It's the update manager. Now I've given Mint a lot of grief on this in the past because of the way it withheld updates and it deliberately withheld them unless you purposely went and selected them. Happy to see though they've changed their stance on it now and uh, given you an easier option of changing whether you have more of the updates. 
So if you go to edit and update policy, you got don't break my computer recommended for novice users, a mixture of stability and security, and always update everything. The always update everything is default in Ubuntu and probably in fact most Linux distros, unless you go and deliberately withhold packages, but then that's you customizing the system. So it gives you a clear indication of what the update is about. So we have software updates, security updates, and we have the level, this is the what they consider the severity of breaking the system. So three, yeah, sort of mid-range level. Uh, five, yeah, security update, breaking because the kernel could break something on your system. So that's withheld on this policy level that I have. So let's install those updates. So right-clicking on a desktop brings up the options to add widgets, add panels, lock the screen, and desktop settings. So there's a few different wallpapers they've included by default. So in terms of the applications pre-installed on the system, so under graphics we have GIMP Image Editor, Internet we have Firefox, Multimedia we have the VLC Media Player, as well as Dragon Player for the video player and Amarok for the audio player. Office we have the full suite of LibreOffice. Settings. So there's a few Mint specific applications on here. So we have the Domain Blocker and the Update Manager and that's the GUFW firewall. Under System, so we have a backup tool. That's a drive manager, partition editor, a system monitor, system log, and a USB image writer, as well as the, and the welcome screen. Utilities, yeah, that's about a standard selection of utilities that you get on KDE. So let's go back to this domain blocker. So I was trying this out and for oh yeah, let's block the bbc.co.uk just for demonstration purposes really. Oh, this is a start page for Firefox. So bbc.co.uk results in me being unable to connect to the website. But if you go to www.bbc.co.uk instead, um, totally bypass the blocking. It's a very crude form of blocking. We're adding specific domains into the slash etc slash hosts file. So you have to be absolutely specific on the domain and subdomains. So that covers most of the Mint specific features of this distro. Now I'd like to come on to a point where they've really missed something. It's a very useful feature. If I right click on the application launcher, go to the application dashboard settings in this case, but it would have been the application menu settings had I not changed it. Go to keyboard shortcuts. If I was a Windows user, what shortcut would I be used to? The Windows key on its own, or the super key as us Linux users would call it. Go on then, let's change it. Oh, I can't. There is a program called K Super Key, which allows you to set that as just the Windows key. By default, it is Alt and F1. I'm sorry, but for a distro like Linux Mint, I would absolutely have expected that program to be installed. I'm not going to complain about the likes of Kubuntu and KDE Neon lacking that feature. So looking into the KDE settings here. Under the workspace theme, you have an easy option to select between the light and the dark theme. Under the desktop theme, you can see we have the Linux Mint theme chosen here. And that is really to do with the panel settings and the application launcher. Cursor theme, good old breeze. Most of the settings beyond this point now are just the default, but it's like the breeze theme and the default KDE settings. I'll show you how easy it is to change some of these uh, theming options. Got this button here, get new decorations, and you can scroll down the list. And there you are, just install, close, and oh, yep, that's showing up. So select it and apply. There you are, that's a new window decoration. So desktop effects, yeah. There you are, like transparency, make windows transparent under different conditions, and one of those would be moving the window around. Quite a useful feature, that one. So KDE Connect, so if you have an Android phone, you install the KDE Connect app on your phone, and you can receive notifications from the phone onto your computer. So those notifications are like text messages or calls. And if you do get a phone call and you're playing music player here on Linux Mint KDE, it'll pause the music while you take the call, and then resume the music when you've hung up. If you're not sure where some of the settings are, you can start searching. 
So numlock, uh, input devices, numlock on KDE startup, uh, turn on. There's quite a lot you can do with the customization of KDE, but that's where I really want to leave it for this video. So that was a look at Linux Mint 18 KDE edition. Thanks for watching. See you all later.